Here I am in Waterford taking a look around this fascinating area. It's got incredible history. There's a lot to see, so let's get on with it. I'm standing on the Larry Storey Bridge, and in 1849, the very first European to live here in the area that would become known as Waterford built a house just over that way. Now in 1861, the Logan Agricultural Reserve was established and the whole point of an agricultural reserve was to get a new colony more productive. So this side here of the river, that's Waterford West today, all this area along here was part of the Logan Agricultural Reserve. But it was originally James Fitzgerald's land and he'd been there for a while and because of the Alienation Act, he was forced to give up much of his land so it could be subdivided so more farms could be built. So the Waterford Plaza is just over that way, but this here used to be a road. And this road was here to get down to the ferry, because long before the bridge was built, there was a ferry service. And it was begun by a guy, fittingly, whose last name was Waterman. It was begun around 1862, 1863. So the line of this fence here is literally where the road used to run. Right now I'm standing on the corner of Kingston Road and Tygum Road and back in 1866 this here was the site of a police barracks. So they weren't here for too long and they shut down in 1871. You can see the two large bunya pines behind me there. That was the entrance to Henry Jordan's sugar mill which began in 1870. Originally there was a huge avenue of these trees going all the way down to his property further along the river there. These are the only two that, uh, that still remain. Now the first European settler in the Waterford area, as mentioned before, was James Fitzgerald, an Irishman. This spot here also is where the house was, where Jordan's house used to be. But this was originally James Fitzgerald's house, the very first house in Waterford, and probably for the entire area, even beyond Bean Lee, because Fitzgerald was here in 1849. Later on, Henry Jordan in 1869, so 20 years later, he moved here, bought this land, and took up residence in Fitzgerald's old house. And a little bit further up there was where Henry Jordan had his sugar mill. Jordan Sugar Mill was the largest in the district. He employed around 20 to 30 people, mostly Irish men. Uh, later on, the Germans moved into the area, so Waterford became a mix of Irish and German. Really is so quiet here. I'm in the middle of Waterford West with all the development. Yet it feels like I'm out in the middle of the countryside. Lovely spot here. If you haven't been here, you should come on down. The river's just over there. Another one. The old road. So before all that was built there, which I think was in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, not quite sure. That's the new road that takes you to Bean Lee, kind of like a highway. But this is the original one. This is where the road has been since, well, the mid, mid 19th, mid late 19th century.
Waterford State School. It opened in 1871 and was the very first school in the Logan Agricultural Reserve. This is the uh, the original building, although most of this, well, much of this building dates from about 1889. Some of the early pupils here at this school included the children of the Mays and Kingston families over in the suburb of Kingston. If you've ever been to Mays Cottage, the kids who lived there had to walk all the way from there to here to go to school and they'd walk with the Kingston children as well, who were their neighbours. At least it wasn't snowing, or hurricanes, or tornadoes, or earthquakes that people in the olden days used to have to walk through to get to school. And outside the club hotel, the very first hotel on this site was built by a fellow called Henry Eden in 1865, and he called it the Eden's Ferry Hotel. In 1871, the license was taken over by a guy called Richard Leo and he established the Morning Star Hotel, again on the same site. Now we know it as the Club Hotel. And it was here in this hotel back in 1879 that the first meeting of the Waterford Divisional Board met. This was also a major stopping off point for the Cobb & Co coaches, which used to come down from Brisbane along Kingston Road there, just behind me, they'd stop here and passengers would get on and off and supplies and things like that before making the trip either further along that way to Bean Lee or hanging a ride and going down to Logan Village. I'm currently walking on the old Bow Desert train line this was the train line that went from Bethania all the way out to Bow Desert. It's been derelict for many years now. But just up ahead of me is where Waterford train station used to be. The station was built in 1885. There's nothing left of it today. Oh, and Canterbury College is just over that way there, just across the road. I'm standing on the site where Waterford train station used to be. Now there's a road just beyond that long grass and that's Waterford Tambourine Road. You can hear the traffic. So it's really quite up high up here. The landscape dips down towards the river, down to the Logan River. Hey. Welcome to Waterford train station. Just come to the other side of the road and here's more of the train line. It's all disappeared from the Waterford train station side but the tracks are still visible here on the other side of the road. This area on the left of me here used to be a cattle dip. Back in the 19th century, this was a, uh, a big area for sugar cane, a lot of sugar mills and things like that. But as the 20th century rolled around, this area became more known for dairying and ticks were a very, very big problem back then. So the locals in Waterford decided that this area here would be the cattle dip. That was 1905. And I've just noticed across there, there's an old cattle ramp. to be a church here it's been moved a couple of times I believe it's now in Ipswich so I think the church was just over that side there so in 1906 it was opened this community continued until 1947 so 1906 to 1947 is when this cemetery was in use that's Logan Lee Road there and just beyond it is Bomper Street in 1942, this was the terminus of an airfield. It started about here and went in a southwesterly direction. It was originally started by the RAAF, but was taken over by the Americans as one of several emergency landing fields that they maintained here during the height of the Second World War. There's nothing left of this airfield now. It was a, it was a grass runway and it's, of course, it's all now been built on. I'm just down on Logan Reserve Road. Behind me that way is River Glen and some, um, you know, housing and things. But the area in front of me here, this whole area here and also going up that way, this used to be a drive-in theatre. It was built in 1974.
It's unusual walking around Waterford, a place that's such a built up area, at least all the way around here. The centre of Waterford is actually quite rural looking, has that rural feel to it. And all the traffic that's coming through here, that's indicative of the history of Waterford. It was people using Waterford to get through it to go somewhere else. And that leads me really to the point of this video, and that is what happened to Waterford? Why didn't the town develop the way other towns did? And the reason why it didn't is to be found not far from here, just over Bark Hill. And the main reason why Waterford didn't really develop into a major town is right over there. It's been Lee. 